This video is about mixed signal simulation. That means a simulation with analog and digital parts. The circuit here is already drawn and set up, but I will explain the details and some of the tricks used to do this simulation here. The overall goal of this circuit is that you have an input or an input signal here in red and each time the input changes there shall be an output signal, an output pulse of a specific width. So, so sort of one shot per change of input. Yeah, what do we have here? Maybe I start, start with this line here, this line dot param vcc equal to 5. This is indeed a text box. And the text is just put in here. Uh, and what does this deliver? It will set the voltage for the digital devices. And we have chosen the 5 volt here. The implications of this, what are the implications? Uh, the input of such a digital device will switch when the voltage goes below or above VCC half. So the switching threshold is 2.5 volts in this case. The output of a digital device will be either 0 volt or 5 volt. And in addition, this line sets an ng-spice parameter. And this may be used in this statement here. If you put the VCC parameter into curly brackets here and here, it will be replaced automatically by the value of 5. So it is easy to change the voltage of the whole thing if you say, OK, I want to run this at 3.3, just change the 5 to 3.3. OK, the digital device we are using here is the 74HC86, which is an exclusive OR gate, XOR gate. The typical usage of such a gate is when both inputs are equal, the output is low or zero. When the inputs are different, one is one and the other is zero, then the output will be one. Well, in fact, these two gates here, the U1B and the U1C, they are simply used as inverters because one of the inputs is firmly tied to the logic 1 or to the plus 5 volt here, the same. But this is indeed used as an XOR, and we will see it later. Yeah, what is the input? The input is a V-pulse source, our red signal here analog V-pulse with the 0 and the 5 volt and the width of the signal is 200 micron and the period, the repetition of this is 400. Okay, well, this is our signal we have labeled with a local or with a net label N1. Uh, but we see this N1 as an ng-spice node is called slash N1. So a slash is added when we use the local net labels. If you use global labels, this will not happen. Uh, we may plot only analog signals, yeah, because logic signals cannot be plotted yet. The interface, the schema, ng-spice interface is not ready 
for that. So we need two resistors R4 and R3 to make these signals here analog. And because we here have analog parts R and C, these nodes N3 and N4, for example, are analog anyway. But we have a slight problem. We have six signals of interest from N1 uh, to N5 and the out. And how to show them, not drawing them all on top of each other, but uh, yeah, just have them here N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, and out. Well, I've been using user defined signals. And I go here onto the simulation tab and choose user defined signals. I see what I did. I have the N1 here and the N2 signal, I'm adding six. We have five volt and so I'm adding six. And so this starts not at zero, but at six. And the, for the next, I will add 12 and 18 and 24 and 30. So I have all these not in a single line becoming abstracted, but having them indeed on top of each other separated. So I can have a look at all of these signals. Yeah, the simulation type I've chosen is transient simulation. So this is our transient tab and we look at it and we see this time step is one micron. The final time is one millisecond. And I have unchecked save all currents and save all power dissipations because for the logic devices, we cannot calculate these. Well, what does the circuit do? Uh, we have this input signal here. And when this input signal rises from zero to one, it starts charging capacitor C1 with node N2. This is this signal here. And N2 is rising, rising. And when this meets the, half, uh, the threshold voltage, VCC half, 2.5 volt, then the output starts switching. The output, the N3, goes down. And when N3 goes down, it starts discharging capacitor C2. And C2 discharges and discharges. And when it is below the threshold of 2.5 volt, its output, signal N5, will rise. Yeah, and so I have generated the signal here at node N5, which is delayed compared to our input signal on node N1 uh, by, yes, uh, half charging a capacitor from zero to 2.5 plus the time needed to half discharge a capacitor from 5 again to 2.5 volt. Yeah, and then I have the final XOR gate and the final XOR gate just looks at the input, the N1 and the output, the N5 and the XOR will deliver the one only when the two are different. So this one is logic one here, this one is logic zero, and so we have an output signal. And when N5 rises to logic one, the output will go down. But then the input goes down and the output is still at one because it will switch to zero only after the 
charging delays. So again, these two are different for a short period of time and the output will be one. Well, and that's what we did. We have a combination of digital device to inverters and the XOR gate plus some analog delay, some RC delay to create a digital signal which is sort of one shot. When we change the input we'll get a one-shot pulse output.